Hi guys, um, I thought I was going to escape talking at Guadec, but guess not. Uh, so this, this is an unconference um, about um, Libra Application Summit presented by GNOME. Um, it is a new, it's North America's first GNOME conference. Um, and I'll, I'll just run through a little history of how, how that started. Um, I think a lot of people know that I really enjoy doing outreach. And uh, it's one of those important parts of a, of a free software project to go out and make GNOME look good amongst uh, the various communities out there. And one of the things I wanted to do um, a couple years ago was to have a hack fest to reach out to uh, at least desktops that are using the same platform as we are. So elementary, Solus OS, those kind of things. And uh, I started off with, and the other thing I wanted was I wanted a, a, a conference on the West Coast. Uh, so I came up with something called West Coast Summit. And the, so we had the first one two years ago. And it was a remarkable success. We, we had uh, people from elementary, uh, and we had it at the Endless uh, offices. And it was really great. We had, we had widget exchanges, things like that. And so we, we built on that success and then had another one. And that also worked out to success. But what I really wanted was to exp I, I never think small. I think big. And it's something we should always try to do is think big. And so I wanted a conference that really engages everybody outside our normal sphere of influence, right? We're generally in free software. We're around free software circles, open source circles, things like that. I want to engage outside of that. Entrepreneurs, uh, people who are writing interesting applications, designing hardware, we needed something that was public facing, uh, uh, outwardly facing. So that's what we, uh, that's what I wanted to do. And I had got a chance. Uh, so thanks to OpenSUSE who gave, who gave us uh, some seed money, I was actually able to work on that dream of mine. And uh, so the concept is, you know, we, we have a lot of interesting things that are coming together. So things like Flatpak um, is, is an opportunity to, to kind of break away from the distro model to, to some extent. If you, if you read the Flatpak uh, website, it talks a lot about how we're taking back distribution. And, you know, there's still, lots, there's still a lot of great things distributions do, but there's a certain independence that we can have because one of the things we don't we don't we have a problem with is we don't know how to measure uh, a a application market uh, right now right how popular is GNOME how how many applications are being downloaded we don't have any information or data about that and we really want to be able to measure that market because once you measure that market you'll be able to know how much money can we can we put into that right um, so that application 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 story is coming together and sorry this thing is getting uncomfortable so the application story is coming together and we need to take advantage of that and so this conference is trying to improve that application story uh, while at the same time improving our ecosystem and also show us as leaders, right? That's the important part. I want to show that GNOME is a leader. So we're no longer going to be passive. We're going to be aggressive. We're going to go out there and we're going to talk about uh, our application story, our platform, all of that. And that's, that's what we were trying to do here is to create new areas that we can go and grow to uh, and new areas that we can actually get new places to fund or to, to fund our organization, right? Um, one of the trends that are happening is web apps have become really popular, and people are not that interested in desktops so much. 
Uh, and I think we need to be, we need to tell the the tell the um, ecosystem that we still matter, that we are still very important. Um, one of the things is is that we are that I'm positioning GNOME in in, this, in the scheme of things as we're user space engineers. We're the ones who build that user space. We're the ones who put the friendly face on hardware. Because when we're successful, even communities like the kernel become successful because more hardware, uh, more hardware it wants to be supported, right? The kernel go, grows as well because people want to write drivers for consumer grade uh, electronics. So those, those are the arguments we want to make. So this conference, um, I expect it to grow and build. It's an it's a investment that I think that we, we should do and we should, we should try to build uh, and grow our application market. And things like Flatpak will, will actually help us do that by breaking, um, uh, by getting the distribution in, and put it in, uh, under developers. Now, is, that, is that the perfect solution? No, there's still many things to work out, but still uh, the idea of going through an app store model and being able to have have developers have a conversation with their users and say, "Hey, can we make money? Can we do? Can we donate? Those kind of things." You know, LibreOffice makes an incredible amount of money from from their Windows users through donations. So we should be able to find a way to build a market around our own things. So that's kind of what we're doing. In short, I really like to take questions. But, um, about about the conference, uh, I will tell you first that it's happening uh, September nineteenth to the twenty first. Uh, I will also say, doing a new conference is incredibly hard and is an incredible amount of work. Uh, and I've learned a, a lot of things about doing the ask, going out, finding new places. To talk to when I when I go when I go I, I go to meetup.com I, I go and ask what do what do people work on you know, and you almost always it's like oh I'm working on this web app and I'm like okay we got to figure out how to deal with web apps <laughs> because that's that's my answer I get most of the time so all right questions so I have a keynote at it and I'm wondering what the audience is what should I talk about. Do you know okay. anything of people who are signed up already? So the audience is going to be. Sorry. The audience is going to be a lot of people who are entrepreneurs, people like like local business people who who are interested in breaking into the Linux application market. So today, the Linux application market is really complex, right? You you bring in, okay, I got to create a deb or I got to create an RPM. Oh yeah, you need to create one just for this specific thing. Oh, also there's all these others. So it's so we're simplifying that. I mean, and one of the things your talk should be about is how we're going to simplify that 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 uh, that application development, right? You you have you 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 just have to create one. It's it's like Microsoft. If you go there and you try to go and get Skype, you know they'll say Windows OS X. Oh, and here's a tarball. It's completely asinine. Uh, if you go to other places, like oh yeah, get it from your distro. I mean, it's like nobody cares. But but can I expect them to have like any experience in Linux stuff or? Are they Mac users or? They, they're going Chinese to be Mac users. They're going to be Windows users. They're also going to be. Um, one other half of that is I told you before, we're, we want to improve the ecosystem. So you're going to see people from the kernel community. You're going to see people from. Uh, so for instance, the Vulcan people are coming, the Vulcan driver people are coming. So you're going to get some technical people as well that are part of our community or part of our ecosystem community. So you're going to get one half that are going to be new people, and another half are going to be people who are, who are uh, not GNOME people, but uh, people from other open source communities. Other, yeah. So, uh, uh, not specifically about LAS, but uh, more in general. Uh, 
uh, you, you mentioned something about this during during the talk, and it's uh, the notion that GNOME is no longer just a desktop environment plus a toolkit, but more of a, a community and a collection of technologies and ways of working towards building a Linux user land for consumer applications. And um, I've, I've noticed or I've seen certain uh, instances where we've lost the support of certain companies uh, sponsoring uh, WADEC uh, based on the fact that they don't invest in the GNOME desktop, even though they're using a lot of the technologies that uh, we either produce of that the culture of the GNOME community have uh, been the home of before they become their own thing. And I'm thinking things like Divas or uh, BlueZ or SystemD, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. Uh, so my question is, do you have any thoughts on how we can improve or, or reshape that general perception about what GNOME is and what the commu GNOME community is about? So the only, the only way to change perception, and we are, we are talking about perception management, uh, is to get out, be out there. Right, so that means you, you should be out on Reddit, or you need to. So one of the things I ever do, I never allow a meme to to be not be addressed. I mean, I will. I during the early days, I think you, people know me. I will search for GNOME, pound GNOME on Google Plus, and I will find people who start talking, and I will, I will, and you know, one of those things. And I've said this before in other talks. When when challenged, they they will draw back. Because they're not used, they, I mean, people just because you know on the on on the internet anybody can just throw out an opinion. But when as soon as it's challenged by somebody from that very same thing, they're like, "Oh, wait a minute, I got to be a little careful." And so being visible at least at least on the internet, but also also we need to be at every conference. Uh, already, I when I'm putting talks for Linux Foundation events, I'm not getting I'm not getting my talks. Um, approve because they, maybe they don't care. You know, if I'm talking about the things, the good things we're doing, you know, we need to be out there, especially the technical people need to be out there giving good technical talks. Uh, we have to have a presence and not having a presence uh, is, uh, is, I don't think is a, is something we, I, I, we sh not having a presence is not a good idea. We need to be out there. If you're not there, then people uh, people don't know we exist. That's just how it is. Because these, there's new things coming in all the time, crashing in containers, whatever you know. There and and people are wandering around. Who thinks about desktops? So we have to be out there saying, no, we're we're your user space engineers. We are. I mean, I had we had Linus uh, on Google Plus saying, oh, I think we've won the war because Chromebooks are uh, uh, outselling uh, Apple MacBooks. And I'm like, what a bunch of crap. <laughs> no, it isn't. You haven't, you haven't gone, won anything. When we win, you're going to get this incredible amount of hardware that want, needs to be supported. Chromebooks are just what? A bunch of set of fixed hardware. You're not, you're, we didn't win anything. Have you thought of inviting or engaging with people? There's people right now looking into how we can get free software, how we can get people to actually pay for free software so that it can be maintained properly. There's people like Audrey Eschwright from the, the Recompiler magazine. She's been giving a number of talks about exactly that problem, you know, how we produce infrastructure that everyone can use, but we never get any sort of compensation. And uh, it's fine when you write software as a teenager and, you and your parents support you. It's fine when you have a job and as a side project you write free software. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But once that situation is, once that situation stops happening, uh, you know. People cannot keep. How do you, how do you support their... yourself on free software? Yeah, exactly. Essentially, I mean, right? Um, and it's uh, we are very lucky in GNOME to have a good number of companies employing us, but yeah. uh, the volunteers 
cannot stay volunteers forever, you know? So I, I think those people would be interesting too. And, and to that's, to. And yeah, and that's, you know, we had, I have had conversations about GNOME software doing exactly that, is to be able to, I mean, this is, this is why the, the distribution model sometimes has um, a weakness, right? Is because it's a middleman. It, there's, so you write your software. There's no, there's no way for those users to know who you are as a, if you're a small-time developer because they're getting their packages from somewhere else. And, and if you don't have a way to kind of reach them, and ha at least if you had that ask, you know, so you come in, you see, you uh, like if you look at a GNOME software, you see something, you see lots of great comments, uh, things like that. It's like, hey, if you like my software, you know, there's a donate button. Uh, you know, uh, if you do that, we'll, you know, they can they can give some value back, uh, a service or something, right? So we we definitely want to develop that that kind of model, and that's something that's we sh we definitely want to talk about in last GNOME. All right. So. so, you know, this is Portland, so there's plenty of, like, uh, homegrown activism, activism there, like little communities working by themselves. Uh, I'm sure you've thought about this already, like, we should engage them. I, I'd be happy to, them, if you want, you like, want to send me their uh, contact. Portland cycling community is really, really... Powerful. Well, let's put it this way. I was in I my apartment that. wearing a GNOME t-shirt. And as I was walking out of the, uh, my apartment in, my, in the elevator, somebody was like, hey, oh, you're a GNOME person? Oh, thank you for your work. All right. I, I went to, a, I would go to meetups. You know, I, I, I go to meetups and in the Portland community. And I, at the time, I was a director. And they were like, you're a director of the GNOME Foundation? And they thought it was one of the most amazing, coolest thing ever. <laughs> I was fanboyed for being a director of the GNOME Foundation. I mean, all these people riveted talking. I mean, it's like, uh, I mean, that's the kind of uh, uh, environment I work in when in Portland. It's it, it's just just that kind of thing. It's it's really quite amazing. Um, people know what GNOME is in Portland. I rarely have to explain what GNOME is. Hey, Sri, <clears throat> curious about your content, the way you generated content for this conference. Was it you mostly sending out invitations? Did you put out a general call for papers, and what kind of participation did you get if you did that? How did you, what was your thought process on generating the content? So I actually had, I made a call out for volunteers to deal with the, with papers so I didn't actually I didn't I didn't do anything on the content I let Meg behind there Meg's, Meg's, been, Meg's been doing most of that and so we curated so the way the conference works right now is that content has specific themes per day uh, so you know the first day is sort of a flat packy type thing and it sort of ends with free software uh, uh, social or, or design, that kind of stuff. So we try to we try to segment that, uh, and then you know, got it. Uh, and and then you have an unconference that sort of supports the the talks on the on in the morning. So yes, Meg. Yeah. So she, Meg will uh, follow through on there too. So. Uh, actually, uh, addressing Alex's question too a little bit, um, one of the things that we're looking at is um, inviting, uh, asking people who participated in the West Coast Summit and the West Coast Hack Fest to also come to Las Gnome. And uh, so that will be also be part of your target audience. And that will also, then the people will have um, a, a chance to hack together and to do unconferences together. Any other questions? Okay, so let me let me leave you with a thought here. Um, you guys are some of the most amazing developers, uh, engagement people, translators that I've ever seen. I've been in this. Next year will be twenty years uh, with GNOME. 
Um, and I've been here this long because because of you guys. It's just, and this is this this all this work is to position us so that we're we're still here, twenty years later, and we're still out there making some great software. But we're gonna have to find we need, we can't be passive. We're gonna be out there, and we're gonna have to uh, get get our work noticed uh, because if we're not we're not every day out there telling who we are, what we are, what we do, we're going to be forgotten. And so this conference is, is, to, is for you guys to get, give you an opportunity to show off uh, your work um, and um, put it out there because we make exceptional software. Absolutely exceptional software. So I'll leave that.